YouTube, it's dying. Well, today I'm going to start disassembly of the Cavalier engine. Uh, I'm going to pull the crank out of it today, get it all ready to put the bearings in. Uh, I'm going to put it in time uh, so that way when I set the new crank in, it'll all the, all the, the camshaft will be where it needs to be. And um, it'll make reassembly get back together a lot quicker. And you know, hopefully this won't take too long and uh, maybe somebody will learn something, so. Okay, you two, first thing we gotta do, we have to remove this pulley. So, that's the first thing we're gonna do here. start by removing these outer bolts. These are 15 millimeter. A <coughs> center bolt right here is 17. No, excuse me, 18. It's an 18 millimeter. That's off. Set the thing down. Off that off. <clears throat> Next thing to come off is this. Now, I have a uh, a uh, three jaw puller that I use for this, and it takes it right off. Um, okay, you two. Pull this off. Sorry about that, YouTube, but I had to reset the puller here, and then I had to let the air pressure build up. But uh, you just pull this off the end of the crank. <laughs> Whoops. Always have your gun going in the right direction. You should always double check that before you hit the trigger. Uh, things that happen, eh? But anyway, YouTube, this is the... You can use a steering wheel puller also to do this. Um, they work quite well, but I just have, I don't happen to have a steering wheel puller. This is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. But. Alright, next we're going to take off the tiny uh, chain cover. <coughs> I believe these are 8 millimeter. They're real tiny things. Uh, hold on here while I get the uh, socket set. Okay, and like I said, I take to remove the timing cover. And like I said, these are all 8mm fasteners. What, if you get gloves, like if you're somebody likes to use gloves, kind of keep your hands clean, don't get them from Harbor Freight, just FYI. These are about the chintziest gloves I've ever bought. Um, I got a set of a small set of gloves that I keep in my glove box in my truck from Walmart that are way better than these. Uh, these are supposed to be, well, they're just disposable latex gloves anyway, so they're not really 
you know, heavy duty or anything. Uh, the regular nitrate gloves are much better. But anyhow, remove all these fasteners around the timing cover. And this is a brand new gasket on this timing cover, so it should come off fairly easily. Um, I had already replaced the uh, timing chain. And you'll see here, uh, it's got a brand new timing chain and set of gears in it. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, we've got to get this out of the way before we do anything else because uh, we've got to take the timing chain off. And once we remove the timing chain and the, time, the timing gear, the lower timing gear, has to come off the crank. Uh, once we remove those, then uh, we can move to uh, actually taking the uh, bearing caps off. But anyway, so all these bolts, like I said earlier, around this timing cover here are 8 millimeter. And what's nice about this timing cover gasket, it's rubber. Um, it's an actual, yeah, formed rubber gasket, and so it's reusable. But as you can see, all brand new timing chain, timing chain, tensioner, gears. Uh, when I had originally took this engine apart, that, this, all this here from the old one was laying in the oil pan. So we thought that that was the only problem with it. Put that in, put it all back together, put a new oil pump in it just because the light was on all the time. And thought maybe it just had a bad sensor. Well, I just figured while I was under there, I'd put... But anyway, as you can see, this is the tensioner now. take off this timing chain, first thing I want to do is put this, I was going to put the engine in time, but I'm going to wait, because um, I like where the rods are all sitting and everything, I can get to everything, okay, if I put this in time, it's going to put number one at the bottom of the cylinder, number four at the bottom of the cylinder, and two and three will be stuck up, which will be easy to get two and three, but to get the one and four connecting rod is going to be a little tough, so I want to leave it like this, but be able to take this timing chain off. See this uh, this part right here. There's actual a hole in here, and there's a hole in the back side, and then there's a hole right underneath this Teflon part. Okay. So what I'm going to do is get a pair of channel locks and just gently squeeze this, and I'm going to slide either a nail or a pop rivet through there, so it'll hold this. And then when I go to put it back together. Okay, once I put it, put the timing chain on, have this leading edge tight, and put it in time, all you do is pull that out, and it puts the tension right back on the timing chain. So let me grab a pop rivet, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm actually going to use a straight punch, and what this is going to do, like I said, you just gently squeeze this so the hole lines up, and you just slide this through, and there's a hole in the back side. Okay, now, if you notice here, now you've got slack in that chain, see? So, now what you're going to, now what I'll do is I'll remove the gear on the cam, okay? And I'll be able to take the chain right off, and then when I go to put this back together, all I've got to do is pull this out, and I'll watch what happens. Boom. See, it puts the tension back on your chain, and this is what keeps your chain tight. But like I said, all you got to do is just, and it doesn't take a lot of pressure, you don't got to be he-man about it, just a little bit of tension. Slide that through to the back side, and voila. So now what I'm going to do is get a socket here. Oh, that's a behemoth. I think that's 20 
Why is that? this trouble. What you can do, I had this trouble in the car, I believe. And she's in the young, when the engine was in the car. Okay. Take your bolts, put them back in your lower pulley. Okay. So what's going on is the there's no resistance, and it's just letting the crank turn. So what we're going to have to do is stop the crank from turning. So what we can do is just take this and gently...
Take this rod cap off the back here, number four, and I'm going to get the rod out of the way. And by doing this, it will let me lock the crank to the block. And uh, these are 10 or 12 millimeter, but they're 12 point, so I'm going to have a 12 point socket to take them off. Not the 14 or 13, I mean. Okay, one other thing to remember, it's very important when you're doing anything like this. You always want to keep your bearings, caps on the same rod, and you always want to keep them pointing the same direction. And on General Motors, as a general rule of thumb, at least that I found on every one that I've taken apart, the little tang on the bearing, the caps always go tang to tang. But, what I'm going to do is, and you always want to keep the same bearing cap with the same bearing, and vice versa, like the fasteners and everything like that. You always want to keep them together. And since this crank is junk, well, it's going back to the, what do you call it, to uh, be refurbished. Um... I'm going to actually put this all the way through from one post on the block to the other side of the block there. And that will keep the crank from turning so I'll be able to, uh, um, I'll be able to remove the bolt on the camshaft. Okay. Not that that's loose. If I just put that through there, and I didn't take the rod off. I'm going to take the chance of bending the connecting rod, and we don't want to do that. So, now. Okay. That off. Rod down. Very. Like I said, it's very important to keep this stuff in the right order. Jim need Christmas. Let me tell you, that was tight. Alright. Now 
now that that's loose. sure you guys can see this, so that's what I'm doing here. Alright, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to use a pot ribbon instead of this. It's not quite straight in the end. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, so it's not going through. On the back side, there's a hole also. What I want to do, let me squeeze that in. And that'll hold that just fine. Okay. Now, take the cam. Take this rocket off the cam. Move the timer chain. And this will only go on one way, so it's not like you can mess this up. Uh, if you can see here, it's got a keyway. There's a key. There's a little pin on the camshaft, and that's what. Uh, that's what holds that. So, get that over here out of the way. I'll remove the cam gear once I take the crank out of the block. Uh, if I do it with it in the block, I'm going to have to take this off, and since there's really no need to take this off, since the, cam, the crank's coming out anyhow, I can just move on and get to the crankshaft. But uh, that's all there is to the timing cover part of this, and uh, that's what the timing chain setup looks like in there, and now we're going to move on to removing the crank. So uh, I'll get set up here, and we'll see you in the next segment. Okay, you two. We're now ready to remove the uh, rod bearings and the main bearings and uh, caps. And like I said earlier, the, the most important part of this part is that you don't get parts mixed up. You should, um, you have to put them back on the same rod that you took them off of, as far as the rod bearing caps and the main journal caps. Um, uh, they have to go back in the same place where they were taken off from. And a good thing um, on these here, on all these caps, uh, there's a directional arrow pointing towards the front of the engine. So that's which way the cap goes on the, on the motor. But one thing you do not want to do is mix up bolts and or uh, for the main bearings, uh, you don't want to mix up the caps or bolts. Um, as long as you line them up and put them on the same spot where you took them off, you're okay. But like I said, um, the, the sockets you're going to need for this part of the jaw, okay, you're going to need a 13 millimeter 12 point socket for the rod bearings. It has to be a 12 point socket. Now, um, some people will tell you uh, it's okay to use um, an air gun on disassembly, which it, it really wouldn't hurt. I myself prefer to do it by hand. Um, less chances of uh, making a mistake, and uh, so here we go. Thank you. 